What's up guys? Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Mark. I'm a poker player from Portland, Oregon, and uh, this is my 50th vlog. And so for this episode, I wanted to do something a little bit special. So for this video, I decided I'm going to try and play one hour in every card club and uh, bar game here in Portland. The poker scene here is really amazing. And uh, I didn't really get a chance to showcase that just yet. Uh, so I thought, you know, what better time than now? So right now I'm going to be headed out to Portland Meadows. Let's go and I'll see you there. Here I am inside Portland Meadows, one of Portland's main poker clubs. It's located in Northeast Portland, less than a 10 minute drive from the airport. They have 20 tables, a full bar and kitchen, lots of TVs playing sports. They generally run one, two, one, three, two, five, five, five. They got daily tournaments. I'll add a link to their website in the description box. I grab a one, two seat, buy in for the max of 400 and take my seat. I sit down and there's already plenty of action at the table as Under the Gun opens for 12, gets called by middle position, the low jack, and the button. Small blind folds, I'm in the big blind, and I look down at pocket kings, are you kidding me? What a warm welcome to the table. I'm going to 3-bet to 50, original razor folds, middle position calls, low jack calls, and the button calls. We got quite the pot brewing as we go four ways to a flop of Queen 3 8 Rainbow. Are you on the phone? No, I'm uh, calling. <laughs> I'm talking to my phone. I'm calling the action into my phone. I, I was just calling the cards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? So I'm calling the. I'm making a vlog. Um, <laughs> he's cool with it. So th that's just how I call the action. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I'm not saying anything about my. <laughs> 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 he says you spell my. Yeah, yeah, he has yeah. Okay. He's I'm, good. I want to replace it. I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't film people or anything. Well, if you're allowed okay. to do it, you're allowed to do it. Okay, that, okay. That's, okay. Yeah. Not comfortable being on the vlog, so I'm gonna- No, 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 but, but, but you won't. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you won't. Only your, only your Nobody's faces. Okay. Right. We'll, we'll deal with the later, I guess. Okay, so while that was going on, I bet 125, and I got one call from the middle position player. We go heads up to the turn, which comes a deuce. I jam for 225, and middle position makes the fold with queen jack suited. <laughs> Why did I you, this? When you showed your hand, I saw through your camera exactly your whole cards. Okay. And I thought it was pocket seven because okay. of it. Gotcha, okay, so I'll yeah. be careful about that. Yeah, Thanks so for I, I, I saw your pocket king. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Away, right? okay. I think the floor might want to talk to you about. Okay, so that was a little bit weird. That was kind of like a weird uh, high and low moment. Um, so basically what happened was uh, the guy to my left saw my cards in my phone. And in all the time that I've been making vlogs, uh, that's maybe happened like once or twice. And generally the person would tell me and then I would fix it, right? But um, yeah, that, that person it, it seemed to be a big deal to them. That's fine. Yeah, and also the dealer, um, you know, I was calling the cards in my phone. So that's how I make my vlogs, by the way. Um, I guess there's different ways that you can take notes at the table. Like, you can have another phone, or you can, like, write it down on paper. Um, the way I started doing it was uh, with a voice recorder, because um, I found it very difficult to play and then take the notes. It was kind of hard for me to follow the action. So I was using the voice recorder, but then when I would go through the footage on my computer, uh, I could hear myself talking in the, in the voice recorder. So that's when I was like, well, I'm just talking to my phone. So that's how I called the action. Um, I'm obviously not saying anything about my hand. I'm just saying flop is this, a uh, guy does this, I do that, you know? Um, and so that's how I remember what happened in the hand. So the dealer uh, 
had a problem with that and uh, started asking to be changed tables because he didn't want to be in the vlog. Um, the uh, floor person that works there uh, knows my vlogs and was like, no, no, it's fine. You won't be in it. Don't worry. It's cool. But Jiller had a problem with it and then another guy had a problem with it. Uh, and so they asked me to stop filming. And unfortunately, I don't get to go out and play poker very often. So when I go out is my chance to make content. So if I can't film, I got to go. Um, but no hard feelings. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lesson learned and I'll be more careful next time hiding my cards. Um, it's all good. So now I'm headed to final table and I'll see you guys there. Here I am at Final Table, another one of the main poker clubs in the city. It's located in Southeast Portland. They've got 15 tables. They currently serve food and beer and will soon be expanding to a full bar. They offer mostly 1-2 and 5-5. They also have daily tournaments and their 20K guaranteed on the first Friday of the month is one of my favorites. I'll throw a link to their website in the description box. I'm ready to sit down and play, but... All right, so here's the deal. There's a list right now at final table and uh, it looks like it's gonna be about half an hour before I can sit down and play. And I can't really uh, afford to uh, just sit around and wait for half an hour. So I'm gonna try to hit up stadiums now. So let's go, we'll come back to final table later. I'll see you at stadiums. Checking out stadiums now, they've got six tables and they offer daily cash games and tournaments. The blinds are 1-1. Once again, gonna throw all the information in the description box, so make sure to check that out. I buy in for 300 and let's check out the most interesting hand from that session. In this hand, we're playing a $3 drama hot bomb pot, so five of us see a flop of three ace, jack, two diamonds. Small blind checks and the big blind leads for 15. I'm on the button and I look down at 10, 10, 10, 8, 6. So I don't have much on the board apart from a middling flush draw. I do have trips down though. Cutoff calls, I decide to just call and the small blind calls as well. Heading four ways into draw time, I draw two. Turn comes to four spades and I draw a seven and a six. I still got trips down, still have a middling flush draw on the board and I do pick up a gut shot straight draw as well. Small blind checks and the big blind rips it in for 177. Action folds to me, including the only player who drew one card, so I think my trips are most likely good. I make the call, and the small blind beats me to the pot for 108. My heart drops for a second as the big blind shows one ace, two aces, three aces, oh thank god it's a four. The river comes a queen, I announce trips down, and the small blind shows two pair, kings and nines. My trips are good, big blind is going to win the board with a set of aces, we chop the small blind stack.
All right, so I ended up playing at stadiums for about 45 minutes, playing 1-1 one, one, and uh, cashed out for a profit of 85 bucks, so not too shabby. And then came home to take care of dinner time and bedtime with my family. And then uh, came to the obvious conclusion that I'm probably not gonna be able to play in every venue in Portland today. So I had to pivot and think, hey, where am I gonna find the most action? And I think the answer to that is the game. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm gonna buy in for 400. They have three one, two tables going right now. So hopefully uh, we'll find one with some action. And as far as the venues that I didn't get to play today, uh, I think I'll end up making a part two for this video uh, at some point in the future. But for now, we're at the game. Let's get in there. All right, here I am inside the game, the venue, not the wrapper. The third main poker club in Portland with Meadows and Final Table. They've got six tables. They offer the largest selection of cash games with 1-2, 1-3 with a 1K max buy-in, dealer's choice, big O. They do have a 10K guarantee tournament once in a while, but I think their focus is more on cash games. I sit down at 1-2, buying for the max of 400. Let's get into it. In this first hand, there's a couple of limps before the hijack, who's been only limping so far, raises to 16. I look down at Ace Jack off suit on the button and undeterred, I three bet to 45. Action falls back to the hijack who makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of deuce, ace, six, rainbow, and the hijack donk leads for 30. Hmm, not too sure what to make about that, but for now, I make the call. The turn comes to four of spades, I would really love for my opponent to stop betting, but they lead out again for 65. I'm super annoyed because I have this nagging feeling I'm losing to ace king or ace queen, but for that amount, I don't think I can fold just yet, I call. The river is another four, and this time the hijack sizes up to 150. I just hate this spot so much. What I hate even more is the fact that I call, knowing full well I'm going to be shown ace king, and lo and behold, my opponent shows ace king. In this next one, there's a $5 button straddle, which the hijack calls before I look down at pocket nines in the cutoff. I race to 20, action folds back to the hijack who makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of 5, 8, 3, 2 diamonds, and the hijack donk leads for 20. Huh, doesn't that seem familiar? Targeting top pair, I decide to race to 60, which the hijack calls. The turn comes to four of hearts, and the hijack Donk leads again for 150. I don't even have an explanation for why I make the call. This is painful to watch. It's painful to edit, so let's just get on with it. The river's the seven of hearts. The hijack makes a super small bet of 100 bucks. I guess I'll pat myself on the back for not raising all in trying to represent a six because that would be the absolute worst. I do go for the second worst option though, which is a call, and I get shown a set of fives. I will spare you the details of this 5-2-2 bomb pot where among my 5 cards I had 2 tens and flopped a set on the top board and not much on bottom. Called a flop bet from one of the tightest players at the table. The turn put a second flush draw on top and I didn't improve on bottom. Called another hefty bet knowing full well I was chopping at best and most likely getting free rolled by a flush draw. The river came a horrible queen on top, now completing a bunch of draws, and the bottom came the last 10 for a little salt in the wound. My opponent fired a massive bet and YouTube, you can be proud. I found the fold. Let's check in with a little mid-session update. Taking a break, getting some air because um, not playing great right now. Dusted off uh, almost 800 bucks and I'm down to my last 140. So it's gonna be hard to run it up. That 522 hand was annoying. I know deep down it's not a good call because I'm probably going to get free rolled on top to a flush or something. And I mean, hey, at least I found the fold on the river, I guess, right? And then the pocket nine sand. Somehow convinced myself that, you know, somebody could blast three times with just an eight. Not that guy, I don't think. Not that player. Not that player. Could have found the fold there. And then the ace king versus ace jack, that was annoying. No, no history with that player, but I, I noticed that they limped a lot or called a lot. But on this one, they took the initiative. They raised. I don't think I'm ever folding ace jack on the flop, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, do you find a fold on the turn on the river? Ah, it's all right. I'm not. I'm not tilted or anything. I'm just uh, a little, a little disappointed, a little mad at myself. We're gonna head back in there and uh, hopefully we can make some money back. 
Um, yeah, even running it up back to like 500 maybe, that'd be good. All right, let's see. All right, let's go through one last hand, and this one everybody limps, before I look down at ace jack suited in the big blind. I race to 15, small blind and big blind make the call, rest of the limpers fold. We go three ways to a flop of nine, three, deuce, two hearts, smashed it. Action checks around, the turn comes to jack of hearts. I bet 30, and only the small blind makes the call. Quick note on the small blind, they're definitely one of the loosest players at the table, so when the river comes a pretty clean six of spades, I'm going to go all in, targeting a worse jack. I put my last 77 bucks in the middle, my opponent pretty quickly calls with a worse jack. Nice to finally have some chips coming my way. All right, so I just cashed out. I was in for 980, out for 250, so down 730, but uh, with a little bit of profit that we got earlier today, only down 350, could have been worse. Could have been better, could have found the folds and uh, maybe actually book a profit for the day, but hey, that's poker. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the different venues in Portland again. Could not play in all of them today, but uh, there'll be a part two and maybe even a part three to this video and uh, I'll show you more of the venues around Portland. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Uh, drop me a comment. Uh, what's your favorite uh, place to play in Portland? And uh, don't hesitate to subscribe if you want to catch my next videos. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.